Welcome back to the channel and today we are in the Neo House in Berlin in Germany and today we're looking at the ET5. Second time we've had it on the channel but the first time we weren't even able to get into it, it was at a show in Dublin. So what we're going to be looking at today is the outside, the inside. We're actually going to take it out for a drive here in Berlin in Germany as well. There's a second video on the channel from this beautiful location where we look at the ET7, the EL7 and even the EP9 that's all here in the Neo House. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. We're on a big drive to get to 15,000 subscribers in 2023. So let's have a look around the car. So here we have the ET5 starting off at the front. It's got this gorgeous, really smooth, pretty iconic neo looking front and now at this stage this has the moon it's a gray option that you can get for your neo it's got the daytime runner lights and these are the indicators as well and then your high low beam and then you also have passive air curtain in at the side there just for that drag coefficient i think it's 0 0.24 lots of sensors lots of cameras around and you've got your air cooling with this nice splitter at the front moving down along the side you can start to see some of the other sensors that you have. So you've got cameras on the side, radar, LiDAR, LiDAR at the top here, more cameras. I think there's 23 in total. Uh, this is the 19 inch 245 45 Michelin's E Primacies. And you've got that nice, just to make it look even, I believe, a bit shorter than it is already. Uh, it's got that grey underneath that goes all the way around the windows either side and these are the pop-out handles this is kind of like that dusty pink color and it's got that then that camera at the back very narrow rear window and we'll see that out in the drive you've got your brake lamp again your neo that's coast to coast sidebar nice design details there actually and again narrows down ET5 badging, electronic tail lift, and it is a Salan. 386 litres, 60 40 split on the seats, and then and underneath, then you've got that subwoofer on the right, and then on the left, you've got some space. 12 volt up here, some bag netting on the right hand side. And then you've got your diffuser with your reflectors in underneath. Charging 11 kilowatt on AC. It's just going to let me open up. Oh yeah, that's a pop open. 11 kilowatt on AC and 140 on DC. Two battery sizes, 75 kilowatt hour and 100 kilowatt hour. You can buy the car and the battery. You can buy the car and lease the battery or you can sign up to a subscription as well. So there's a couple of different options in it. Nice B pillar, frameless windows. You can see some of the ambient lighting in underneath there, and you've got this ribbed effect, kind of like a, a rubber with your vegan leather on the top with that gray. So, this is the black with the gray. So, there's a couple of different options there's a black and gray, there's a cream or sand, and then there's also like kind of a minty green on that door you've got some fabric here as well so again your vegan leather more leather and then that fabric in underneath now good morning there's Naomi talking to me so let's have a look and see if we can get the air con uh, so 10.2 inch screen here you've got a three spoke steering wheel Left hand side is your driver assist and your cruise control, etc. Right hand side is your volume and media selection. Nice bit of design there. So it's on, depending on the color you can get, this one is the gray, but there is a kind of a goldy bronzy one as well. You've got the infrared driver, but again, to the naked eye, you can't see that. Lights and indicators on the left and on the right hand side, then you have your wipers. Uh, and the steering wheel is adjustable via the center console. 12.8 inch center console, very responsive. Lots of things going on here, but no Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Um, so it's telling me where I need to go home. There's Numi giving me the thumbs up. So frameless. Uh, you also have your SOS button built in up here. 
and then you've got a large panel sunroof that goes all the way back. No glove box like the other ET7s and the EL7s. They prefer to have the storage in underneath. Your reverse neutral drive with your park on the side, your drive modes, your hazard lights, and then your central uh, locking wireless charging too. And then, left and right, and this is the updated comfort packet with the better sound system, with the better seats that are heated, cooled, and massage. Now the standard ones come heated and in a basic massage, but with the comfort pack, this is cooled in the front and they're also heated in the rear. You can see that over there, the design of what that looks like. Single seats with these upgraded comfort pack. Um, head height for me, um, not bad. I do find that because of that battery uh, swapping system, um, I find that it's a bit, I'm a bit straddly on the steering wheel. Uh, and I hear that a lot because of my height, six foot two, 188 centimeters. Just the way it's set up for taller drivers, it is a small bit tight in the cabin. But I won't be the first or the last to say that. So door, you've got your windows and you've got your door button there. And then in the rear, you have your dual vents, you've got your USB type C, you've got your, I actually can fit my feet in underneath that, so I might try and put that seat down when I'm driving it. You've got your ambient light all the way along with your window up and down button and your door open button. In the rear, with that seat the way it is, uh, I actually have a bit of headroom. Yeah, a couple of centimeters. And it's two USB type, sorry, I keep on saying USB, two Isofix down here. And you have your, your cup holders. No hatch to the boot. Let me have a look to see if that seat can go down even more. And then that frameless doors, front and rear. Oh yeah, it's going down. So that's all the way down now, so that probably make it a little bit easier for me. Oh yeah. Adjust the seat, Derek, that's all you need to do. No. It's the inside of the Neo ET5. Let's run through some stats and then take it out for a drive. So this is the smallest and most affordable Neo and it's based on the second generation EDS platform. Acceleration is zero to 104 seconds. It's dual motor all wheel drive with a 100 to zero stopping in 33.8 meters with a 50-50 waste distribution. 360 kilowatts worth of power across both axles giving you 489 PS, 700 newton meters of torque. Two battery sizes, the 75 kilowatt hour giving you 456 WLTP and the 100 kilowatt hour giving you up to 590 kilometers WLTP. Length, it is 4.79 meters long. Wheelbase, it is 2.9 meters. Width is 1.9 meters and a height of 1.5 meters. The weight of the 75 kilowatt hour battery is 2165 and the larger battery is an extra 20 kgs. 2185. Six different colors, deep black, star gray, cloud white, stratosphere blue, airspace blue, and sunbathed yellow, and they can also tow 1400 kgs. What's it like driving the Neo ET5? Around Berlin anyway. Um, as we did when we were inside in the Neo house, it is seat, definitely seated a small bit high, but you actually get used to it. I'm six foot two, 188 centimeter. It will depend on your body makeup, long legs, long torso. But um, I do find that the central console and the uh, window, there is a bit element of the right hand side of the windscreen is fairly obstructed. But steering wheel is in a nice position. It's all adjusted via the central console, the same as the actual um, wing, the door mirrors. Somebody recently pulled me on the fact that I was calling them wing mirrors, but the door mirrors, because they're not on the wing anymore, as he rightly pointed out. This is the first Neo that came without air suspension. So this is on Multilink. It is all wheel drive. It has a 250 kilowatt motor in the rear. 
and then 110 kilowatt motor in the front giving a combined total of 360 kilowatt in my recent video I was talking about the traffic light view that we had on the Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV and this is exactly the point so at this junction here in Berlin I there are no signals on the far side of the junction to allow us to actually see whether the traffic light is there's a small one over here to the right but again this unit so overall because of the battery in underneath and that battery swap it is fairly squeezed and the drive modes are done through the uh, button of the center console so comfort is what it's in at the moment it's balanced um, visibility is not bad but as I said it's probably it could be better wing mirrors are a good size and it has blind spot but just that area here for me because I'm so high up it's definitely a visual impairment on it now you get over it don't get me wrong For comfort, it's plenty torque, don't get me wrong. Uh, and then if I put it into Sport Plus, straight away. It is very torquey. Also, one of my recent videos, I had my tongue out when I was cancelled. And so we have Nomi kicking in there. So we've got sport, custom Sport, so in custom you can change it. Let's expand that out to the acceleration. So you have a choice of 4 seconds, 5.9, 7.9, 9.9 or 12.9. Regenerative braking, very low, low or standard. Comfort standard or steady. And then you can save that then, depending on how you like to drive. So I talked about visibility in the rear. It's a tiny little letterbox, unfortunately. Just with that fastback design, it is uh, limited on that visibility side. Suspension, even though it is not air, it is smoother, in my opinion, than the Tesla Model 3. Even the new Tesla Model Y with that more dampened suspension that they've given us. You can feel it, though, uh, on those undulations on the road. The instantaneous of the torque. Yeah. Steering wheel, it's not a full circle, it's flat top, flat bottomed. Nice. Overall nice. Let me know in the comments if the Neo is on your shopping list. It may be already available in your country. Let me know what country you're messaging from. But I know that it is going to be coming to the UK market anyway. Whether we're going to get it in Ireland at some stage, I'm not so sure. But it was at Goodwood Festival of Speed. And I believe it was a right-hand drive version. So that uh, kind of, you can't really hide the fact that it's coming to right-hand markets. Uh, definitely the UK. And usually what happens is it filters over to us in Ireland. With potentially just a single location. The likes of a Tesla or a Polestar. Because it is a small market in Ireland. But a good one. Some really nice um, stuff coming up there with the LiDAR. Uh, people walking, cars stopped, that van that's beside me. That's great to see. Really responsive screen as well. So steering is good. Brakes are good. Yeah. Just that height and that visibility is probably my only downside at the moment. Stay focused. <laughs> That was new me keeping an eye on me because I was looking at the satellite navigation and they could see that I wasn't looking on the road in front of me. Looking forward to getting this out in the open road. I have a very short time with it today. They have allowed me to take it for as long as I want, but I'm just caught up with other things this weekend. So I'm looking forward to the official press drive when it does happen. And hopefully we'll get a bit more motorway mileage put up on it. Hopefully you've enjoyed my first look and, or sorry, my second look first drive at the Neo ET5. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. Leave a like, comment on the video, let us know if you're thinking about this or what else are you looking at. Is it going to be the BYD Seal? Is it going to be the Tesla Model 3, etc. There's lots of competition in this space now, the BMW i4, Kia EV6, etc, etc. Remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.